1658 AF45 Regulations Q, YY, LL, and YY Prudential Standards FBOs Revisions Domestic BHCs and SLHCs Comment ID 134192 Date June 19, 2019 Prudential standards for large foreign banking organizations, revisions to proposed prudential standards for large domestic bank holding companies and savings and loan holding companies, R-1658. On April 23, 2019, there was a press release from the Fed entitled Federal Reserve Board invites public comment on proposal to simplify and increase the transparency of rules for determining control of a banking organization. In this press release, it was stated that there would be an open public comment period for the next 60 days. It is not yet 60 days, and there is no mention of this comment opportunity, but rather two mentions due June 21, 2019 regarding foreign banks and the risks they pose to the U.S. financial system. As a matter of fact, right now at 7.15 p.m. CST, there are two different separate entries on the Fed site that have a link to the same press release. I will not include the link here, but will keep it for evidence. Which should be addressed concerning U.S. banking institutions that are financing or otherwise engaged as a corporate entity of their own are matters connected to executive compensation as well as incentive compensation for employees who may be in important positions to make substantial decisions concerning the future of the company of concern and the people that are impacted by the company's products or services. First and foremost of concern regarding executive compensation packages are legal standards regarding proxy reports and what is actually entailed in the process of using proxies. Proxies are more than a financial consideration, even if the appropriate use of a proxy requires financing. Insofar as I was searching out the above mentioned, but got diverted into a statement regarding my personal credit history under another heading, it is possible that right now I am composing this response in performance of a role for some proxy report issued in regards to reporting requirements for executive compensation. Why would I personally, with that credit history, be in a position to be used in proxy scenarios involving executives? Is it connected to the use of derivative contracts that are used as options? Are these options employed in manners that intentionally obscure sources of actual financing and or offset liabilities through employment of tax waivers or by use of instruments that are unverified for a particular performance category but instead represent as cheaper cost expenditure via mischaracterization of its means-tested value. This is not just about domestic U.S. risk, especially if federal policy, including Fed policy, permits the use of U.S. citizens and residents for use in transactions or arrangements connected to foreign commerce or foreign debt service without disclosure and without transparency. There are a number of means by which an imprudent executive or other employee in a company or a financial institution can manipulate pre-existing policies to accomplish imprudent goals. Depending upon the company, the product or service involved, or the person whose property is being used in these unverified processes, this malfeasance can present a national security as well as market risk, and not just for the U.S. Policy needs to be set, especially concerning the use of derivatives as options available for executive compensation or other incentive compensation for employees that might be aided and abetted in taking unsustainable risk that actually constitute crimes, if appropriately characterized via application of appropriate regulatory and reporting compliance measures. The time frames on these are of specific importance, especially in connection with the six-month requirement regarding exemptions on opposite-way transactions, deferral of payments to both executives and other employees via internal risk management strategies that may actually be obscuring other factors, and how this impacts other forms of reporting and their timelines being proposed by the Fed in other categories. I contend that the March 27, 2017 executive order Presidential Executive Order on the Revocation of Federal Contracting Executive Orders, revoking prior three-year reporting requirements by federal contract bidders, may pose a conflict of interest concerning three-year reporting requirements connected to Section 951 of the Dodd-Frank Act. If nothing else, a refusal to appropriately report on allegations of fraud concerning a company can impact not only the award of a federal contract and hence impact the company's valuation in consideration of executive performance, 
but can impact day-to-day -day operations, which provide long-term and more comprehensive performance indications regarding executives and other employees. This can impact interstate and international commerce. A revision of clawback policy implementation, especially in regards to the potential use of derivatives as executive compensation and or access to others considered to be connected to assets of the executive, needs to be performed in order to assure that it is not being disabused by executives or others. Using proxies or permitting for derivative contracts as offsets of clawbacks, including uh, other offsets can be misabused to serve as actual insider trading or can be used in other ways that are illegal or evidentiary of fraud and malfeasance. Whoa. Similarly, hedging strategies connected to executive compensation or other incentive compensation strategies for employees need to be assessed in connection with the above mentioned elements concerning potential disabuse of derivatives. Finally, the use of employee benefit plans, including in connection with designated beneficiaries, per SEC Rule 16b-3, as part of executive compensation in regards to any op opposite way transactions to match it, need to be better explicated and regulated. Any possibilities that such transactions and reporting requirements associated with them can be obscured through use of derivative contracts or proxies needs to be removed. This is central of importance to assuring appropriate characterization so as to prevent the continued expropriation of personal private property for public debt service that can include access to assets by Treasury in one manner rather than another. This includes connections with executive or employee insurance policies as well as annuities. It also includes benefit plans for employees involved with any incentive compensation program. Finally, please refrain from previously engaged mischaracterizations regarding prior public comments to the Fed of this comment by any who are reviewing it and assessing it at value in connection with its publication.